Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be mounting our iBoot bar and this is produced by Data Probe and I got this from a subscriber Marcus from Italy thank you Marcus and um, he sent me this and it's broken how it has a bend one so we're gonna we're gonna start by fixing that so um, I'm just gonna do that really quick I'm not there fixed enough so that it will go into the rack so um, this device enables me to remotely turn on and off these plugs it has two input ports here where the power comes in this one controls these four connectors over here and this one kind of controls these four over here this is very optimal for some of the things that I have in my rack like my blade sensor that is not able to turn on and off remotely I would really like to be able to turn on my blade sensor remotely and turn it off again so that I can play with it from somewhere else the same thing goes with my two disc shelves down here on my Exponology storage stand it would be really awesome too to be able to turn them on and off because because they do use quite a lot of power so um, and I ain't made of money so we're gonna mount this and I have a plan for that so um, let's see what I have in mind okay right now there's a hole in the rack because I've been taking out old servers um, you saw that video last week probably so right now you can see this is my console that come flips out and I'm able to flip up flip up the screen and I'm able to do stuff on that and in here is my switch the uh, Linksys 48 port switch um, that one is not used anymore and I just connected that to the UPS because I found it's probably a good idea to have that mounted to the UPS but there is a lot of wasted space here normally there is just a bracket on here so that the air doesn't go through here but my idea is that I would like to have the iBoot bar sitting here and I just loosely put it in before and it looks kind of perfectly to be sitting right there something like that and this can still slide out and in and I would be able to put the cables in this way and um, the other way I think that would be pretty cool so yeah I was thinking that we should try and mount that there see if that's good well first things first um, it's kind of dirty in here I haven't been cleaning in here for quite some time so I'm just gonna take a sponge and remove the dust from everything in here hmm okay um, it was quite dirty in there so to mount something in the rack you use these mounting brackets here and they go onto the rack on the other side so you put them in and they sit like this and as this is a 1U device well you put in two of them and with one hole in between this is 1U then you uh, put in the device and you screw it in tightly from the front and it should be there really good I have picked some screws some black ones because I thought that would look good with the black uh, paint on the front of the box together with this plastic washer here kind of look like this it's not a competition to make it look good but well it doesn't have to be ugly if it um, doesn't have to be so um, we're gonna try that so we can still access the iBoot bar from the back um, as long as there is nothing on top of it so we can put it in and we can put the screws in here on the front what? 
Okay, I see that I've picked the wrong one. This one does not have the right diameter to um, to do this screw. So I need to find one with a bigger hole. Did, I don't think that's bigger. Okay, this one has a slightly larger diameter. So that will go in. So we'll put that in instead. There. And these can be quite difficult to um, put in and take out, especially if they are new or have been sitting there for a while. It's, it, they are kind of springy and you can use a screwdriver to pop them in and out, but it can be a real hassle. Real hassle half. Ah, we have an electric screwdriver. Goes the wrong one. There. Now we're just gonna pop the screws in first. Is that the same problem? It's a good idea to save these when they are available. Suddenly one day you're missing them and you don't have them. Be sure to stack up on them. So I um, found another one that was the wrong size over here. Uh, so. There. Way better. Let's make sure this goes in and out. Still looks good. There. So now I just need to put in some cables here. I ran into a small glitch there, so uh, let's um, have a look at that. Uh, okay, here we are behind the servers, and this is the three connections coming out of the blade center. And I have kind of just prepared these to go just into the junction boxes or outlet boxes that are up, up and down here. So these wires are not particularly long, so that's kind of a problem. Even well, I have one that will that will reach when it um, when I put it in the right way, but the other two is not gonna reach in there. That was really stupid, Martin. So we're gonna um, have to prolong those. Okay, so to get the cables um, up to the I boot bar, I'm gonna slide the blade sensor out ever so slightly. if I can. So um, if you'll catch it, if it comes too far. Okay, I have a couple of these um, that will be able to prolong, extend those cables with, well, I don't know, half a meter, probably. So that should be all good. Okay, I'm not gonna recommend this, but um, this is what I did. I extended them and I put a piece of black gaffer or duct tape around them so they shouldn't fall out um, by themselves because they're gonna be sitting down there um, to this side and well, they might just slip out of it. I'm gonna plug them in here and see if we can get a good camera angle of that. Okay, so here we have the bag of it. So. This one is uh, irritating, it keeps falling down, so uh, I'll plug that in and we'll plug the next two in as well. So that's the one side of the of the blade sensor, right there. Cool. I have also taken out the other three cables there, all long enough. So let's uh, start with the shortest one because that's the... Probably the one that's... And then the next one. There. And this one is way too long, so that's probably okay. Okay, so now we plug that in. I need to plug in a network connector and we need some power on this thing. Before I forget it, I better put this back in. There. And 
put the screws back. There we are. So to power the iBoot bar, um, they have these rather big connectors. Um, I forget what they are called, but the yeah, I really should know that. It's a C something connector, and it's uh, good for 16 amps. So we're gonna put two of those in, and I'm gonna power those with these two. These are only 13 amps, but well they will have to do should still be able to have enough power to um, power the blade center so i'm gonna put in one of each okay that one goes over here a and that one is number b and we're gonna did i just put that blade center in a bit too early i do believe so Let's see if I can get the cable out of here. And the other cable is out. I need a network connection. Connection? Mm. Can't see anything from this side. Hmm. So I've marked the plugs for the iBoot bar with some yellow strips here just to um, well see if I can remember what these are. So let's uh, plug the first one in here. There. And I've prepared the other one over here. So we're going to plug that in as well. There. And let's go around the front. And we will see that the iBoot bar now has power and turns on the blade center so I better go shut that off because that was not supposed to turn on right now okay let's see if we can turn this off from my phone I believe the password or the user was admin and if I'm not much um, I think the password was awesome Mm, involved login. I'll figure this out. Okay. Embarrassing. Uh, I had put in awesome with capital letters. So right now we're just gonna select all there and we're gonna off. And it became very quiet out in the data center. So uh, unfortunately it seems that my Wi-Fi is don't stretch out into the data center so I was not able to go out there and control it from there so well but this works so the iBoot bar is installed the blade center is off again I'm not making noise I'm not gonna be using it right now so I don't want to power it on so and I would not power it on and power it off just for fun so I really should have connected this first and powered everything off before I connected it but well, that's just how it goes. So with my phone, I could really power on and off my blade sensor now. And with a little bit of network mingling and by forwarding the right ports in my router and opening the firewall, I would be able to power the blade sensor on and off from my phone from anywhere. I can still do this because I have openings into jump server so I can jump in here on a server and from that server I can turn on and off the blade center. I also want to connect the disk shells down here but I'm not going to be doing that today because um, well time is running out for me so I have to say goodbye and um, I think we made something really smart today so please give this video a thumbs up it helps so thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye